As Russia takes down the Iron Curtain, more and more Western films are appearing on their silver screens. Soviet filmmakers are scrambling to develop new talent to meet the foreign challenge. One of the Soviet Union's hottest new prospects is 22-year-old Olga Kabo. After 27 films, she's on the fast track to superstardom. But Olga had different stars in her eyes when she was discovered. I was 15 years old and I wanted to be a cosmonaut, wanted to be a cosmonaut. I finished special school for children who wants to be a cosmonaut. <laughs> Olga's bright personality and heavenly body have made her Russia's sweetheart, but her star's life in Moscow wouldn't hold much luster for a Hollywood hopeful. Many of her activities mirror those of any successful American actress, burning the midnight oil while thrashing out a complicated script an endless stream of lessons to fine-tune her talents, a disciplined health and fitness program, and a relaxed dinner talking shop at Pizza Hut, Moscow's answer to Spago. When foreign friends like director Roman Polanski and American actor Frank Whaley are in town filming, but the similarity is only skin deep. Training for aspiring actors is rigorous and intense, and Olga was required to attend a four-year drama school where math and history were as important as acting classes. The classic Shepkin method taught there is demanding, so Olga and other alumni often return to watch rehearsals to refresh their grasp of the technique. Major studios still dominate the cinema scene, so after graduation, Olga was signed by Mosfilm, the largest and most powerful among them. As there are no agents in Russia, it's important for Olga to spend a lot of time there doing tusovka, or schmoozing. She personally calls on all of Mosfilm's casting directors to boost circulation of her new publicity photos. <laughs> Olga's talent and perseverance have paid off with a string of starring roles that have brought her fame, but by Hollywood standards, little else. While she earns many times the average Russian's wage, her pay for top billing on a successful film is only around $1,000. Rather than money, stars like Olga rewarded with perks. She frequently goes to the exclusive Cinema Union House with its foreign movies and sought-after periodicals, a well-stocked subsidized coffee shop and a restaurant serving exotic specialties from the Republic of Georgia. Normal restaurants are always packed and very expensive, so this has become the headquarters for the gregarious film community. Very little film business gets packaged that hasn't been discussed here first. Most Russians wait in lines hours a day to buy ration provisions. There is plenty of food in the country, but Olga is among the few who can afford to shop at the central market, where farmers charge capitalist prices. Since a few pounds of grapes cost an average day's wages, even a star's salary can get tight if their eyes get bigger than their pocketbook. I have no such problems because I must watch my weight <laughs> and it's not very important for me to eat a lot. That's why my parents buy something, but very, very, not very often I eat much food. Although she has no trouble procuring the necessities of life, Olga still can't buy a car. She earns enough money, but there's a 10-year waiting list. And since taxis prefer Marlboros and dollars to rubles, life can get even more complicated when you're late for an important rehearsal. He is ordered. Olga still lives with her parents in a modest apartment near the city center. Getting her own place depends more on political friends than money, so until she's a superstar, she has scant hopes of moving. With so few material rewards, what keeps Olga from emigrating? For starters, participating in newfound freedoms. I'm very happy that I can work in this period when everybody can do everything he wants to do and everybody can talk about what he wants. Olga and her colleagues can now make films that delight the public and send hardline censors reeling, like this popular film, Two Arrows, an erotic political satire set in prehistoric times. But there's a more fundamental reason why Olga stays in Moscow. I love my country and I think that it's very important for everybody to have his own nationality. That's why I don't want to leave my country. And. I'll be there all my life, here all my life. <laughs>